start the stream. Welcome back. Um, today we're gonna work on um, the tower expansion. So basically, whenever you finish a level, you will uh, either have the choice of continuing to grinding to grind on the on the current level, or either um, um, expand the tower and basically get new content and a new and a new piece of the tower to to play on. Um, yeah, and there are some other stuff that we're gonna that we're gonna work on, but we're gonna talk about them later. Uh, let's do a recap of what, uh, of what we've done last time. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, okay, so last time we've worked on, um, or we've continued to work on the infinite levels for the upgrades. And um, yeah, one of the things that we've done is the actual infinite levels. So let me maximize this. So as you can see, right now we have 100 out of 100 health. So, so the, the, the second 100 is the max health. And here on the um, bottom left corner, we have a way of upgrading the tower's health. So if I buy this upgrade, I'll get plus 20% more maximum health. So let's buy this. And as expected, we get uh, 20 more health on the max health. So what's uh, interesting about this is obviously I can just keep buying this and I just get more and more um, max health. And as you can see, the, the multiplier rises, the level is increasing, uh, the, the, the number of coins required uh, is increasing. But the, the most important thing or the most uh, interesting thing is if you have a look at uh, how this is implemented, um, so we have a scriptable object that defines this upgrade, which is this one. As we can see right here, only the first four levels were defined. So we have the 20 multi, uh, the 20 percent multiplier that we've seen at the, at the start, and then 25, 30, and 36. So those are the multipliers that we have defined. And the game knows, based on those values, knows how to extrapolate new values for um, for the other levels. And um, yeah, so, so you've seen how it works in the game. We also have a um, debug window for this. So this is the Explorer. And you can have a look at how the, um, how the metrics are increasing. So uh, the multiplier is the red, uh, are the red dots and the cost of the upgrade uh, are on the, on, the, on the blue dots. So let's see, let's pick, uh, so let's pick this dot. So what is this? Actually, we can't actually see. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So if you hover over, wait, why can't I see it? Okay, wait, what? Uh, I should have had a, a, a tool tip whenever I hover over. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Okay, I don't know why, why it didn't work before. So anyway. Uh, as you can see, yeah, here we have the cost for level 75, and the cost is 75. And we can also, um, so this is level 75, we can trace the line, and I guess this one, yeah. So at level 75, we have this multiplier, which is like a like a huge number. But the idea is that we only we've only defined the first four values. And then from those, we've extrapolated the values and we can have infinite levels for um, for the upgrades. And uh, this is defined by this, uh, by this checkbox in here. If we don't check it, uh, we only have available those four, uh, those four levels. Okay, and uh, other than that, um, last time we worked on some polish in this editor and uh, in the in the inspector for this uh, for the upgrade definition. So, uh, so that's kind of it. That's kind of what we've done last time. And um, yeah, yeah, as I said, um, today we're gonna work on uh, on the tower expansion. So let me okay, let's do this. So we're going to work on the tower expansion. 
um, as, I, as I said previously, you'll be able to to get a new piece of the tower to play on after uh, you finish the level. We're gonna add some some models to the to the weapons. I'm gonna make some uh, some quick models in in Unity with I guess I guess I'm gonna use Pro Builder or something to to make something real quick. So we have. Uh, we have something visual to, to see the weapons and be student with them. Uh, and after that, let's see, yeah. Uh, so currently in the game we have, we, we, we can uh, see the the, the paths uh, uh, for, for the enemies. Uh, the, those are the, the, the blue lines that you see on the, on the tower, but those are just available in the editor because they are done in gizmos. Uh, and we, if I disable gizmos, uh, we can't see them anymore. So I'd like to have uh, maybe a, like a line renderer uh, to be able to see those lines in the in the game. Um, also for the weapons, uh, we have something similar for the weapons. So let me let's say make a projectile weapon here. So here we go. We have a way of visualizing um, the uh, the area in which the uh, uh, the, basically, the weapon is effective. So, if the enemy is within this boundary, uh, uh, the weapon will attack it. And um, yeah, as you can see. And uh, same as before, this is done with gizmos. So, if I disable gizmos, uh, we no longer have the, the, the that view. So, I'd like to have uh, I have to have something similar uh, but done in the in the game I'm not sure how to do this uh, yet but uh, but we'll see um, another one so we have have um, so, so our tower uh, is made out of modules so uh, what, what a module is just a piece of the tower so let's, let's get one so yeah here. Here's a, here's a piece of the tower. So the the towers are made of uh, those small pieces, and you use those pieces and combine them to to generate a tower. And one thing that I want to do is, whenever you whenever you edit a a, a module, um, I'd like to I would like to be able to preview all the weapons. Um, for the weapon slot, so let's see. Let's say that I want to preview um, what, uh, what a weapon would look like on the, on this weapon slot. Uh, ideally, have a, a way um, some here to um, preview all the weapons. So the weapon, let's say the projectile one, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sit here and see how it uh, how it look like if. Uh, um, if uh, this uh, was used at, uh, at runtime, so this is more like a debug feature. So, so we can just um, so test the weapons, uh, um, or more like test the the, the weapons uh, to be sure that uh, that are positioned okay on the tower. And that's it. The the, the last two are not uh, really important. This is uh, to be discussed. Um, so, so it's not for today, and this is a bug that I, I think I've made in the first stream uh, from the game, uh, which is related to the tower expansion, uh, but I don't think it's uh, 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 relevant anymore. I mean, it was relevant before, I, I just uh, uh, created the task just to be aware of the, of the limitation that we have, and... Um, after we do the tower expansion, I'm probably going to close this uh, this bug too. So, so what this bug says is, after I expand, because uh, because we have part of the, the tower expansion functionality, we just have to hook everything together to to work. Um, so we have the the tower expansion part, so where you can call a method and expand the tower. And what this says is. Uh, um, the the paths on the on the the lower uh, on the lower part of the tower are not connected to the, the to the paths uh, of the of the new of the new part of the tower, uh, but uh, we we won't have any 
any cases where we need um, 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 where we need to to combine those those two pieces of the tower because you you uh, at any time you're only gonna play on just a section of the tower not not multiple of them so um, I don't think this bug is uh, relevant and uh, but we'll see and uh, we're gonna close it with, if it is like like this but yeah okay so we're gonna start with the with the tower expansion um we have two two parts for this so this is the ui and second is the functionality itself uh, i'm not sure exactly um what else we have to do on the functionality part so so we have the the, the part in which new uh, module pieces are spawned uh, I'm not sure if we have to do something else there, like hooking up stuff, uh, so so the enemies are spawning on the on the new piece of the tower. Or yeah, I'm I'm not I don't remember this. I've done this like uh, I don't know, ten weeks ago or something like that, maybe more. So uh, we'll have to see about that. But uh, first, we're gonna start with the with the UI. So we're gonna add a button and we're gonna make it um, appear whenever the level ends and uh, there are some other. Uh, states that uh, that is gonna have so let's start working on this so let's track the time and let's see okay so um for now i think i'm gonna put the button on the uh bottom right corner it's gonna be similar f to the uh, upgrade uh, tower health upgrade button here so let's do that um I think I'm gonna just duplicate uh, the button on the on the left and just put it on the on the right. Um, so this is the whole thing. Let's make a let's make. I mean, I wanted to make an empty button there. So let's undo that. Let's make a new empty in the canvas because that's what I actually want. So. Um, let's go expansion. Uh, let's see how what we've done with this. Uh, actually, let's go into 2D mode. Okay, so we have just a, like a, a square in here. Okay. Let's do the same thing in here. Let's align to the um, bottom right corner. Let's see. So, no, the pivot, this should be one. This should be also one, I think. Let's put this at 400, 400, and 0, 0. Position and no, that was wrong. So the Y should be zero. Yeah, like this. Okay, so we have this here. Let's duplicate this uh, this green button and drag it in here. And let's uh, align it. Okay. So so we have one button. Um. Let's call it expand tower. And uh, uh, one other thing that we're gonna do is, um, let's see. Yeah, so one uh, one thing that I'm gonna do is duplicate this button uh, because you can only expand the tower um, while while you wait for for a new wave to start. So uh, while while the cooldown is going. That's when we want to expand the tower. So um, have to do something else uh, whenever uh, you're playing an extra wave. So uh, start expansion button, and this will be wait for wait for wave button. I don't, I don't have a better name for it. Um, is uh or maybe we can uh, um let's see i think we can same um uh, the same text except i'm gonna change the 
the color of the button. Let's try this. And we're going to have to change the, the color of the text as well. So let's try maybe white. Yeah. Maybe let's make it uh, let's make it darker. Let's try this one. Yeah. So it's going to be the button whenever you can expand the tower. And when you can't, you're going to get this button. And now that I think about it, I'm going to make this uh, not white, but like uh, mid gray. So that you get the feeling that the button is disabled. Okay. And now we're going to have to make a script that controls this behavior. Um, so let's see. We're going to put it in the UI. I think. And um, let's just call it tower exp expansion button. Okay, let's uh, correct the namespace. It should be like this. This should be a mono behavior. And let's see, what do we need? We need a reference to the two buttons. So, um, private game, actually, game object? No, let's just actually, yeah, we need a game object. Yeah, so, private game object. Um, Active and disabled. Let's add uh, the correct uh, attribute to those so we can access them from the inspector. And let's see what what do we need to do. Uh, so we have a we need to know two things. So one we need to know. Um, to know if we have finished the level and we have an event made for that already so if we go where would that be um where would i put that actually i'm not sure where i would put that uh i think it's in the, in the ui yeah here we go so on level complete we have uh, we have this so so this uh, this event is triggered whenever the the level has ended so we're going to use the, this event to to enable the button. So let's see. Um, we're going to have some. Actually, let's first find some uh, some methods in here, and then we're going to um, uh, then going to write them. Uh, what I mean, implement them. So public void. Um, On level end, so that is going to be one of them. Um, we will need a button for on, on wave start and on wave end. And I think that's it actually. And probably we're going to have a void uh, reset. Uh, which is gonna be called whenever uh, we click the we click the button. So private void on let's call it on click. Okay, so first thing, as I said, uh, wait. Yeah, I wanna uh, I wanna call it reset and um yeah, I'll have to do some things here. I'm not. Uh, we will need a reference to some things in here uh, or maybe, maybe we're gonna have an event and actually I'm not sure we'll see but first let's uh, let's uh, go with this so uh, so this is the actually let, yeah let's rename it like the, uh, like this so dot special button active Uh, disabled. Let's uh, assign those. Uh, let's get rid of that ugly thing. File mono script. Awesome. 
And let's see. Uh, so first, uh, on the active button, we're gonna have uh, uh, this is not correct. Uh, we are gonna use this. We're gonna go on this script and call. Uh, where is it? Oh, I made that a private, so I'm not able to see it here. Yeah. So this should be a public. File. There we go. So on click. So when you click on this, this method is gonna be called and on disable we we won't do anything. So let's do this and let's make this. Oh, huh, interesting. Okay, so oh, so so it's uh okay when it's not interactable it's semi transparent. Okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do then is actually it doesn't matter. No, we'll just leave it like this. Get if it's interact. Actually, we kind of care if it's interactable. Yeah. So I'm gonna disable interactable, and on disable we're not gonna make it semi-transparent. We're still gonna keep it like this. So the idea is uh, I don't want I don't want it to be. Um, you can click on it, but I don't want it to 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 have any feedback when you click on it. That's why I had to disable it. And let's see. Uh, yeah, we should start. Actually, no. Uh, there's one more thing that we can do. So we can add an event listener here on level complete. Um, we can call on level end. And let's actually make those two. We're going to make uh, two more events. So. Um, Let's call this on wave start and let's duplicate it and call this one on level on wave end. And here, um, yeah, we're gonna add two more listeners. I should make those. Uh, yeah, I should work on those uh, listeners. Uh, they, they're they're kind of kind of big. In the sense that it takes uh, it takes a lot of. I don't know. Okay. Um, let's assign everything. Uh, so uh, this is on wave start, and this should be on wave end. Okay. So now we have uh, the events hooked up here, and what we need to do is let's uh, let's go to to uh, to where those events. Or, hmm. Actually, I'm not sure. No, let's let's first implement those methods here, then we're gonna hook up the those new methods to to where they're supposed to be. So let's disable everything. Um, this is gonna be our reset. Uh, that we're gonna set everything with false. We're gonna disable uh, both, uh, both the buttons, both buttons. Um, what do we need to do here? Um, yeah, on level end, we're gonna do this. On wave end, we're gonna disable this. On wave start, we're gonna enable this. So let's see what's what's happening here. Uh, let me make those two expression bodies because we don't need to do anything else. So when the level ends, we want to enable the the active button, so the so the green one. Uh, when the wave starts, and actually this is not correct. We want when the wave starts, and the level has ended already. So let's add a private bool here. Level has ended. Okay, let's make some now no, let's do it like let's let's even though I have those expression bodies uh or can I can I do it like this? So if level has ended end 
doesn't work. This works in JavaScript, but doesn't really like this in, in C sharp. So let's, uh, yeah, we have to put anything here. So if level has ended, we're going to do this. And the same thing here. If level has ended, uh, we're going to disable this. And what we have to do is here, this false, and here we have to make this true. Okay, and now what to do? Let's put the let's put the log for now in here. Actually, no, I have to put the message here. What do you give me an empty string? Okay. So theoretically, that should be it uh, for the script, at least for, uh, at least for now. So we can actually no, we can't try it. Uh, let's put a, a let's put an awake here, and let's call it reset. Um, so I want I want to see the button in the in the UI when I'm when I'm not in play mode, but I'm, when I enter play mode, I would like it to disappear by default. So let's play. So now it's gone. And now what we have to do is wait for this wave to finish, and after that we should get the button. And we did not. Wait, how many how many waves there are on this uh, on this level? It would only be one. So this is uh, this is the list of levels. This is the level, and we only have one wave. Okay, so something is broken. Um, the question is what? Because we should have seen that button there. Um, you should have seen it. Okay, so there are two things that I'm thinking about. One, this was not triggered, so we're gonna trigger it manually and see if it works. Okay, so we trigger this, but uh, we still don't get the buttons. Okay, so uh, why is this? Why is this? We are not getting the buttons. Why? Why don't we? Okay. Um. Oh yeah, and also I I could have used um I forgot I had. It. So I have a. Uh, Yeah, but it, uh, should, I should reset this on, yeah. Actually, no, I can't reset this. I have to clear history. Yeah. Let's try it again. So we should get an, uh, an invocation here when the level ends. Hopefully. And we did not. Okay, we should have seen something here. And we didn't, so yeah. But even so, even if I trigger it manually, which uh yeah, as you can see if I trigger it manually we get we get values here. Wait, what was that? Have I clicked twice or have I seen it uh actually go off? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I might have I might have clicked it twice. Anyway, um, yeah, even if I click it, uh, if I uh, trigger it manually, uh, the button still doesn't appear. So something's wrong here. So let's breakpoints and let's attach the debugger and see what's happening. Enable yeah for this session, please. And let's trigger this. Okay, so we're getting here. Oh, I'm stupid. This should be true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. 
uh, we have to do this. Yeah, on level end, we should uh, activate this. On wave start, we should activate the disabled one. And on wave end, we should disable the disabled one. Okay, yeah, now it's fine. Let's try this again. Let's put it on fast and we should hopefully get a button. And we did not. But if I trigger this now, we do get a button. Okay, so there were two issues. So there was one in, the, in this script and there is one in whatever this, uh, this uh, event is used. And uh, thankfully we have a way of knowing where that is used. Because um, if you look in the in the inspect, oh god damn it, I, I tracked something. What is this project? No, stay there. Here, as you can see, we have uh, debug lines for our, uh, for our uh, event. Um, so I think we have, as you can see, actually let's go out of 2D mode. So our event goes from that button way over here it goes to the level manager so if if we click on this we go to the level manager and apparently here so on uh, when the level manager says that the level is complete it should trigger this but apparently it doesn't so we have to see what's happening here okay so let's edit the script and see what's going on. Okay, so this is not called. So that's that's a great start. Uh, let's see where this on complete is. Uh... Wait. Oh, never mind. Oh no. So this is the. Uh... Uh, this is this is the one from 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 C sharp and this is um, the one from the from the inspector. Yeah, my bad. But anyway, so this is this is actually used. So or or it is in what I mean. So maybe uh, this if statement is not correct. And complete before down. Let's put a flag here. And let's restart the game and see what's uh, what's happening here. Uh, let's speed up everything. Okay, so we're here. This is false, which is correct. We are on wave zero, uh, current wave zero, and we get a wave count of one. So if we haven't completed the level and our current level. Yeah, so this is not actually correct. There should be an uh, an equal sign here. Or you can actually have a double equal sign. Uh, oh, this is gonna this is not gonna work. At least not in the long run. Hmm. Or, or maybe it's gonna work. <laughs> okay, so this is one place where it's not gonna. Okay, we'll have to do some changes here. We're not going to do them now. Uh, let's put the comment here. Um, second. Okay. So um, yeah, one problem here is that the current wave uh, just keeps uh, getting incremented. Uh, even uh, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't matter on which uh, level you are. This is just gonna get uh, incremented uh, each time. Uh, but this part of the code, uh, this, you're gonna get the the wave sound for a specific level. So let's say you're on level uh, on level two. 
um, and there are three levels, you're going to get the number three from this expression. And this won't work with, uh, with this current wave, which, uh, as I said, keeps uh, being incremented each time. We need to change this uh, somehow, but um, yeah, that doesn't really matter right now. Um, and also the, uh, I don't know if this is uh, uh, made false somewhere. Oh, it's made false on setup, which is correct. Oh no. Oh, we have, um, oh my bad. No, we have current level set to zero. Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 this doesn't make sense, because if this is zero, wait, something is not right, oh yeah, okay, this is where I'm, I'm keeping the, uh, come on, start is the wave is going to have a value of one and then yeah okay okay my bad okay so this is so this is the value that we use in the ui the the, the wave counter is here at the top here and this is gonna this is the one that's going to be incremented uh, indefinitely okay so uh, that here um we act this is not actually a problem because the current uh, the current wave is actually reset where we um, um, set up this manager with another level definition. So uh, it's, it's going to start from zero uh, at each setup. So that's not a problem. Uh, and uh, now because of that, um, we can actually get rid of this incomplete flag, which we are not actually using it for anything right now. And we can only look at if our current wave is equal to um the get waves count minus one so if the last wave has ended um we can do this and now we don't need the we don't need the flag pretty sure we don't need the flag anymore so let's get rid of it let's remove the come on let's remove the the breakpoint let's Continue and let's uh, restart the game. So now I think it should work. Um, it should work fine. Um, let's play and let's change the song. Let's uh, let's try this. And after that, let's do this. Oh yeah. Okay. So we we've seen the button. So we we have the button now. We can click on it. We get on click on it, which is nice. Um, yeah, it sh right now it should have extended the tower, but it didn't. Uh, but we still haven't implemented that. But the important thing is that uh, when the level uh, when the level ended, we actually got the we actually got a button. There we go. Yeah, so that's nice. <laughs> Now, uh, what we have to do is implement those two new um, events that I've that I've made. So on on uh, wave end and uh, on wave start, and those uh, we need to deal with them in the wave manager. So let's see. Yeah, let's make two uh, private the event um, on on my start and on wave end. So we're gonna call on wave start. Um, 
let's see, when are we going to pull it? I think here, so after uh, the cooldown has ended. Here or... No, 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 no. We're going to call it in the setup. Yeah, so here. We're going to invoke it. So when we set up the level, lower the wave, um, that's going to call, we're going to call on wave start. And on wave end, um, we are going to call it, uh, let's see. So when, we're, when are we making the cooldown active? Yeah, here. Okay, so uh, this is the place. So before we start the cooldown, that's when we're going to say, okay, the, the wave has ended, actually. Okay, now let's hook those up. Um, let's see. So the wave manager, we have on wave start and on wave end. Let's assign those. Uh, and let's select the trigger method. And now we should be fine. Let's try. Let's try to play. We're gonna put this on fast forward. We're gonna wait for the enemies to reach the top. And now we got a button. And now let's keep the cooldown. And the button is disabled. We can all click on it. And it should become uh, available again when the last enemy reaches the top. And it did. So now while the the cooldown is active, we can expand the tower. And when the cooldown runs out yeah the button is gone awesome this is awesome now um now we actually have to implement it and uh yeah looking at the code now i think we might have some small problems or we might encounter some small problems. So, but yeah, actually we're, we're just gonna deal with them uh, when we when we get there. So, let's look at the. Uh, so, so we had a, a previously a button for this uh, uh, in the old UI, um, which was this, and we actually hooked something to it, but I'm not sure what. Not. Oh, we did not hook something. Okay, never mind. I thought we hooked something, but I think uh, I was uh, thinking of this uh, of the event, not not what happens on click. Oh, never mind. Okay, so we have uh, we have to make it somehow. So now the question is, who should um, who should have to deal with uh, with this tower expansion? Who should do stuff for us? Um, probably this manager. So this manager um, deals with with the list of levels. So it receives. And now that I think about it, we, we need to make another. Level, but uh, we're gonna come back to that immediately. But yeah, this I think this is the manager that we want to call, or or at least one of the managers that we have to call. Let's see what what do we need to do actually. So we need to expand the tower, obviously, and we need to say to the game, okay, go to the next level and start playing that level. Um, I don't think there's anything else uh, that we need to do for this. Not sure, or at least not a, not at this stage. Um, at least not at this stage, because one 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 feature that we're gonna have. So, as I explained previously, um, you will start. Uh, let's play the game. So we'll start on this on, the, on this part of the tower. You will just go and create your weapons. You're gonna upgrade them and uh, do whatever here and whenever you uh, you want to expand the tower as i said uh, the tower obviously the tower is going to expand you uh, some some new some new modules here uh, on top of the on top of the old one and the old ones 
um, you won't be able to interact with them anymore. And what we're going to do with this is um, just so that we, so that you have um, so, so it's not very punishing for the player. Um, uh, we th we we think of uh, keeping track of how much money you've spent on the tower. So let's see, let's say you've created a weapon, and we know you've uh, um, consumed uh, some money on this. And we're gonna keep track of that. And uh, when you expand the tower, we're actually gonna get the money back, so you'll be able to 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 build new weapons. A new, yeah, new ones on the new part of the tower. Um, but that part, I don't think I'm gonna do that today. Uh, I haven't thought uh, much about that, uh, how I want to do it. But um, yeah, for now we're we're only gonna deal with the tower and actually going to the next level, and we're gonna deal with the economy and stuff uh, later on. Yeah, so so for now, um, yeah, there are two things that we have to do. And uh, first, um, let's make a new event. And let's call this Spend Tower. So in our button here, Let's make a private unity event. Um, private unity event. Um, yeah, let's call it on click. Okay. Field, and we're going to call this here. And I think we're done. Uh, actually, let's remove those. And I'm done with this script. I don't think there's anything else we need to do here. Um, all we have to do is hook that up. So here, on click, we're gonna hook this event and we're gonna trigger it. And let's see. One place that we I said we're gonna do stuff is here on the level list manager. Put a listener here and use the event. And now I don't think uh, I have a method for going to the next level. So uh, we sh should do that. Yeah, we don't have that uh, that method. So let's uh, let's make that. Oh, we actually never mind. We do have. Have it, uh, but we haven't made it public. Let's make sure that it is what we need. So, yeah, this is the current level, or, or the, the level, uh, or the internal level, let's call it. Yeah, I think that's that's everything actually. Yeah. Let's just make this public and see. Let's see how it works. Um, where is it? Set up next level. There we go. So that's one. And the second one is going to be on the tower builder. Let's add a listener here. Uh, let's go to our event. Let's assign it, and on Tower Builder, we're gonna call the. Now that I think about it, I don't think that's the way to do it. But we will see. So this expand method is not public, so let's make it public. Edit script. Oh, it is pub. Oh, it is public, but it doesn't like that it's a task. Okay, that's a fair point. Am I using this anywhere? No, I'm not. Um,
Now I'm thinking that uh, no, I'm thinking if I if I need this task for anything. Because one thing that I can do is just not return it. Or I might just make a uh God damn it. Actually I don't think I can. Public. Actually no, yeah, let's do it like this. We're gonna expand and we're gonna call expand with let's say five modules. And I don't think I have to do Yeah, let's keep it like this. I might have to Let's try catch here. No, I don't think so. I might listen to this though. Or not, I mean, not this. This should be a similar event for. Oh no, I would need to get. Yeah, and there is complete. Yeah, actually, no, I don't think I need to listen to this. So let's try this. Tower Builder, expand. Okay, uh, let's get rid of those um, those things because we don't need them anymore. Don't think so. Um, there was one here as well. Yeah, this one. We don't need this anymore. So let's get rid of it. Uh, yeah, the setup should be public. Okay. And I think that's it. I think that is it. Um, oh, there's one thing that I have to do. Uh, let me look at something, uh, because I'm not sure. No, where would that be? Where have I used that? I don't think it's in this project though. Um, let me check something. Auto inspector, this one. So it has three events, but those are not hooked to anything. So yeah, that's a problem. Okay. Um, Um, this has listener, so this should be trigger. Yeah, okay. We need uh, uh, not here. What do we need in the wave manager? We've got those two things, so we need to make them triggers as well. Uh, when we have to ah, god damn it! Yeah, for this to work, we have to implement the collectors. Object of collector is the scheme object. I'm gonna explain in a bit uh, exactly what this is. Oh, where else? Yeah, here. We need to implement this. And that's it, I guess. Okay. So, yeah, and now we have a lot of stuff here. 
Okay, so what's happening here? Um, so as I explained in previous streams that um, that um, So um, I've, said, I, I've, I've explained that we've, we are using a, um, a library that I've made called DS Framework. And um, we, yeah, as you saw, we have uh, this concept of events, uh, which are um, scriptable objects. And we use them to hook different parts of the, uh, different parts of the game. So they are not, um, there's no hard link between them, uh, so if uh, by some means one of the either the listener or the trigger disappears, the game is not gonna crash. Um, and uh, I've made some things, uh, some uh, editors or debug windows on top of those uh, the, uh, on top of those events, uh, and that is this object inspector and in this what you can do is you can take a, a uh, select a, um, a game object and then you can dig into to what's what what's being used inside of it so yeah for example store expansion it's listening to three events and it's triggering another one and this uh, and uh, yeah, for this to work, we need to do some some small uh, in in the code. So so one of the things is we have to implement this interface so the system knows um, what objects uh, should track and get data from it. And uh, by implementing this, you have to uh, you have to have uh, this property and uh, Public method. Uh, so when when, when anything uh, changes the editor, it's gonna refresh the data in the backend. And also for the events, there's one special thing we have to add, or you have to specify if uh, the event that you're adding is either being triggered or uh, you're listening to that event, so that whenever you're in, you're in the UI. I know exactly uh, how to how to deal with those, uh, those values because you can see. Um, so this is our button, uh, or I mean that's the, the the root of the button. And there are two two arrows coming uh, coming out of it. So one is going to the tower builder, and it's a green arrow, which means that the the button is triggering an event, and the event is being listened to on the tower builder, and that line means that we are listening or the button is listening to an event and that event comes from the level manager because as you can see it's written in red there and you can also um, um, actually does not a uh, yeah, click on this ah, that thing I can't click on my yeah so I can click on here for some reason um, yeah, so you can uh, you can navigate between those uh, those places. So let's say I want to go to the level manager. I'm going to click on the, on the circle, and now I'm the level manager. And now here I can see. Okay, so the level manager um, triggers an event, does something on on another object which has that name, and also on our tower expansion button. So so basically, what I what uh, what I'm trying to say is, we have those events. The scripts are written in such and, and the scripts are written uh, in such a way that uh, it enables us to have a debug view for for the events and how they flow throughout the game. So you know, so you can know exactly uh, where an event is triggered and who's listening to it. And you can also, for a for, for a broader view, you can also click on the scene itself and see everything that's being used. So all the events that are being used and where they are used. 
So for example, yeah, on the list level manager, we are listening to an event on the wave manager. We're listening to four events and, you know, and, uh, also triggering events, also variables. So on the tower, we have variables that we're using and yeah, you have different stuff here. You can also disable the gizmos in case you don't want them. So if you don't want the gizmos that uh, you just have to disable this, if you don't want to see exactly where the votes are being used, you just want to see them, uh, uh, see the, the, the events the, or, the, the, or the variables or whatever, you can click on flatten and then you get uh, a much simpler list. And yeah, so yeah, this is just a, a way of debugging stuff. And that's why I have implemented them so I can later on uh, see those uh, those things in the in the in the scene view. So exactly how events are flowing and where they're triggered and where they're being listened to. But yeah, so uh, what were we? Uh, I think uh, yeah, I think we've done everything that was needed. So we have an, uh, we have the expand method being called on on uh, on expand tower, and we're also advancing to the next level on the level list manager, which is nice. Uh, what we have to do though is create another level. So. Um, Actually, we don't have to, but we might as well do um, uh, the same as with the waves, which are infinite. So you can, after you finish all the waves from, from a level, you can still continue to play on that level and the waves are just going to be repeated. Uh, the same thing is going to happen for the levels as well. So after you finish a level, um, you can continue to the next level and then um, that you're just gonna get a random level um, which might not be the best not how it's implemented right now because um, it might be a, a little bit weird to get levels that are progressively uh, progressively harder but uh, we haven't got uh, to that yet this is just uh, this this manager is just uh, copy paste from the from the uh, from the the one that controls the waves so um, yeah, let's let's another level, just so we can deal with it easier. So uh, let's call it level two. Let's go inside of it. Let's create a wave. Uh, wave one. We have only actually yeah no it's the same anime type but yeah let's say I want five. Means I want one per second. Sure. Uh, let's add multiplier. Let's say I'll add them to have treat the health, and I want them to. What else is there? Let's make them a little bit faster. So 1.5 the speed. After that, we can create. Let's make another wave. Wave two. Unfortunately, we have uh, multiple types of enemies, so let's make like uh, a ton of those. Uh, so let's say 20 enemies at the spawn rate of. Actually, no, uh, it's the other way around. Four per second, four enemies per second. Um, and we're gonna make them. Um, Let's see, let's, let's increase the reward for them. Let's say like 10 times the reward. Okay, so let's save this uh, and change the music. First, let's see, what should we listen to? What should we listen to? We can Benjamin. Sounds nice. Okay. So getting back to uh, let's uh, let's go to the project. Okay. So now we can play. We can wait for our uh, wave to finish. Let's go to the top and see when the enemies reach uh, reach this. So the first 
two and the second two. And now we have the button and now I can click on it. Now we got a new piece of the tower. And now the enemy should start from here or any of the points here. And they did not. So that's a bug. But then there are looks like there are way too many <laughs> there are way too many enemies. Uh, uh, apparently we finished two waves uh, instantly. I mean, uh, the same wave finished two waves, if that makes any sense. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I wanna I wanna check. so first let's go to the tower builder and yeah so whenever I expand a tower one thing that I wanna do is or uh, let's look a bit at the code so so when we uh, spawn the tower stuff is happening here which we don't care uh, much about uh, what we care about though is what is it yeah this part oh but okay so we are resetting the get uh, composite splines for roots Okay, so those are only the the new modules. Okay. Um. Yeah. So one thing that I was concerned about was um, when we create the towers, we are saving the. Let's play and pause immediately. So we are saving those splines, and uh, those splines are those uh, game objects. And what those splines do is, um, yeah, basically they are, they are the lines that you, that you see on the tower. So nothing fancy. So one concern that I that I, that I had was, uh, let's play this. After, uh, so we only ha uh, let's stop actually. Um, so right now have only four uh, splines and one concern that I, I I had was okay so I expand the tower and um, the previous splines were not replaced they, they actually are those uh, those two splines are actually the new splines but apparently it doesn't really work because as you can see uh, there are enemies that are being spawned from from the old splines for some reason, and not only that, but they are. Oh, oh yeah, that that's yeah. Okay. So when I spent the tower, the the enemy started going uh, immediately. So I think I think the problem is that um, we are starting to spawn enemies immediately as we uh, are in the setup. So let's see. So let's look at the wave manager, and we should have a setup method in here somewhere. So here we have the setup method. We are saving the wave definition. We are doing the setup for the enemy manager. 
and we say we are stuck level or the wave now. So I'm thinking um, yeah we need to introduce some break this up a bit or at least yeah so so the problem is that uh, we have this um, we have this cooldown um, we use uh, so when the wave is finished we start a cooldown period uh, between the, uh, yeah, after the wave is finished and the, the, the next one starting the problem is that when I when I click the button we by saying that we're gonna play on a new level that means that we're also gonna play a new wave obviously so this method is being called and uh, what I'm not doing is this method is resetting this uh, this uh, cooled out timer that we have, which is which is good and bad. So it's bad because if if I don't reset this timer, we have this thing that's happening right now. So we have enemies that are being spawned, which is okay because we started a, a new wave. But the problem is that we still haven't get, uh, gotten rid of uh, of the of the cooldown so because because the cooldown is still active and the and the wave is still in progress this is like an undefined behavior you shouldn't have a cooldown while the uh, while the while a wave is running so this makes it so that when the cooldown runs out even though a wave is is playing right now we're starting another wave right uh, right afterwards which is not which is not right so what i think we need to do here is and i think we need someone to deal with this i'm not sure how but um, probably another manager so what i think we need is um let's see we need to construct the tower so the new part of the tower and then we should have a period in which we wait um so so, so, so the idea being that after you expand the tower you should give the player a little bit of time to um do his stuff maybe uh, i mean not maybe but for sure maybe he wants to do some upgrades some uh, buy some upgrades uh construct new towers uh, on the new tower a uh, new weapons i mean a new weapons on the on the new piece of the tower so we need to have a little bit of time there for for the player to adjust to to the new let's call it playing field So I think we need uh, an intermediary here. So what we've done, uh, what we've done now is uh, we've created this expand tower event, and we've hooked up, we've, we've hooked this directly to the um, here, we've hooked this directly to the level list manager, which basically says, okay, go to the next, go to the next level and start it. And also we hooked it directly to the tower builder, which creates our new pieces of the tower. I think we need to have something between those two, um, or between the button and those uh, those two those two things, because I think I want to do the tower builder first. So I want to build a tower, then let the player do his stuff, and then start a new level. And eventually, uh, and uh, when I when I build the tower, obviously finish the, the the level that it's currently playing, so it doesn't go on. So yeah, I think we need another manager, and I'm thinking how we should do it. Um, 
and we actually we actually gonna need to do some other stuff as well, but uh, that's not a problem. Let's see. Okay, one one thing that we want to fix here, I guess, is when we set up you know, a new wave. I think we want to reset this cooldown. So we want to set it to false. Um, maybe we want to set the value in the UI to zero as well. Like so. The internal timer it doesn't matter what, what value it has because we are not uh, using it. We do have skip. Uh, okay. Ah, also, okay. So this is the skip cooldown. We don't care about the cooldown actually. Yeah. So we want to reset the value in the UI and we want to uh, actually disable the cooldown. Cool. So. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, let's go to the tower folder. Um, let's make a let's make a class here, which is gonna be tower exp expansion manager. And I know I'm gonna implement some stuff here, so let's do this real quick. Uh, do I have that here? Yes. Not so close. Shit. Like this. Let's make this an expression body. Nice. Okay. So, um, what do we need here? So, first we're going to need a public method, which is going to be called expand. Expand. So this is going to be the entry point for, uh, to this manager. We're going to call this uh, when this event is being triggered. And we can actually uh, also set this up right now. So let's do that. So managers. Um, our expansion manager, our expansion manager, and that was actually a good one. We need an if oh, we need an event listener at this expand. Have, uh, have uh, the lines. Yeah. Anyway, that doesn't matter. It shows up here, but it doesn't show up the other way around. So we have our expansion manager here. Anyway, doesn't matter. We don't care about the lines. Actually, let's disable the gizmos for now, so they are not. Uh, Annoying. Okay, so here um, we'll have the expand method, and we're gonna do yeah. As I said, we're gonna do two things here. So the first one is gonna be uh, event. Let's create an event for this. So uh, we got tower builder. Um, The second one is gonna be trigger um, next level start.
And actually, we're gonna do another thing, another thing here. Um, trigger current level stop. Okay, so when we expand the tower, we want to trigger this. We want to trigger this. And this is going to be triggered sometime afterwards. We're probably going to have uh, void. Uh, but star level doesn't. Now let's hook this up. So um, so now we have only one event here. Uh, we're going to duplicate this and we're going to make another three. Event tower. Um, here, tower, uh, tower builder. Current level stop and next level start. So yeah, now we have uh, three uh, three new events. Let's hook those up. So here, um, tower builder trigger current level stop and next level start. Okay, now let's hook those up. So uh, on the tower builder, instead of listening to this event, we're gonna listen to this event. On the level list manager, we wanna go to the next level. We are going to listen to this here, yeah. And probably on the list manager, uh also um are going to have another listener for the current level stop for which we don't have a, a method yet uh, we're gonna need it we're gonna add it uh shortly uh now so uh, i don't know what's what's it gonna be called but uh let's see um How do we want to do this? Uh, so do we have some yeah managers here? Um, managers. Let's go to levels. List definitions of here. No definition. I got uh, manager. So here we will need some kind of uh, stop method. So public. Public with stop or stop current level. Right now we we don't need any we we don't need to do anything in the uh, level list manager, but we need to pass this value down to the level manager. Yeah. So here, level manager dot stop current level. God damn it. Stop current level. Let's make this an expression body. Now here also the level manager doesn't need to know about this. It doesn't have to do anything except uh, form the wave manager about this. So let's go to the wave manager and right here at the end let's add this. So stop current level, and here, here is 
uh, where we're gonna do uh, uh, what I wanted. So uh, set the cooldown to false, so we don't have a cooldown, uh, and yeah, set the cooldown to false. Yeah, this this should uh, this should stop everything. And back in the level manager, we can call the wave manager dot stop current level. And that should be everything. So let's try it. So just by by saying by stopping the. But actually, it's not necessarily correct. So uh, not set up quite. Wait, what? I'm confused. Stop current level. Uh, what? What? I don't get it. Why am I not seeing it here? You have the correct object. So why am I not seeing it in the list? Oh, I'm, I'm blind. My bad. Okay. Yeah. So um. Yeah, as I was saying, just setting this uh, this cooldown to, or just disabling the cooldown, we, we are only gonna um, call this method when we are uh, or during the the, the the cooldown period. That's 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 what we that's when the button is active. This expand tower button. That's when it's active. So if we're during if we're in the um, cooldown period um, while the cooldown period is, is going at the end of it uh, we do this on complete so that's uh, what uh, starts the new wave and the uh, but just by saying that the, the that the cooldown is uh, is inactive um, this uh, yeah this uh, block of code won't be uh, called anymore so it won't Ever reach the incomplete in here, so basically it's gonna stop everything from uh, from continuing to. Work. So, I mean, uh, that until uh, we do another setup and we start, we actually start another level. But yeah, this should do it for us, and we need one more button, one more button. We have the tower expansion button. Let's make another button here, which is going to be called um, let's call it start level. We don't have a disabled state for it, only an active state. Start level button without active. Let's change the text. Uh, start level. We're gonna uh, keep it in the same in the same spot as the tower expansion button because they won't ever be shown on screen at the same time. So it's okay to put them on, in the same place. And let's get rid uh, let's get rid of some stuff from here. So. Uh, let's get rid of this um, of component. Let's get rid of all of those, and let's add another events listener. So we want to enable this button when we expand the tower. So that that we know. So this game object uh, set active true. We what else? What else do we want to do? 
Um, let me see. We want to trigger an event when we click on the one, and the, the event is this trigger next level start. Trigger. And actually, I think this is everything that we need to do. Oh, no. Uh, one more thing. So let's another let's add another listener. When we click on this button, and actually to be honest, we can yeah with with the event. It, it doesn't really matter. So when we trigger this event, uh, we are going to disable the button. False. Okay. And by default, it's gonna be active. Uh, no, by by default, it's gonna it's not gonna be active. Okay. Okay, so like like this. We don't have any buttons. We are gonna wait for this wave to finish. Let's see. One, two, three, and four. We have expand tower. We click on it. We've clicked on it. The timer uh, has been reset. We got a, a, a new piece of the tower uh, being built here. We don't have any waves starting, so there are no enemies uh, going around the tower or climbing on the tower, which is exactly what we wanted. And now we can do whatever. We can do our stuff here. Let's say put a laser here or something. And now we have the start level button. And theoretically, uh, let's see, where is the... I think around here is the spawn. Uh, those two places might be the spawn points. Uh, so now we can click on the start level, and nothing happened. Oh, no, it did happen. I don't know why it took a while, but yeah, we do have enemies. There we go. I'm not sure why we have only two enemies. Oh, some of them spawned way down here. Okay, so we still have some errors. Or um, not 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 errors, but some uh, um, have some uh, what do you call them? Uh, some some references to some uh, to some paths that are that should no longer be uh, available. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to our. Oh, I think I know why. But uh, let's check. I think I know why. I don't want to move anything. Um, enemy spawner. Enemy spawner. So here. So this is our enemy spawner. And whenever we spawn an enemy, which would happen here. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, we get a spline from somewhere. Let's see where we, where do we get a spline? A random spline. Where do we get a spline? We go to tower data. We look at the splines and we get a spline from there. Um, should have or or more like this shouldn't have access to the previous splines okay i'm gonna add a breakpoint here and let's look at the co uh, let's uh, uh yeah let's start uh, playing okay so so we we get this we have only two, two splines um yeah, the length is zero, everything is fine. I don't care. That's one enemy, there's a second enemy, third one, and the fourth one, and yeah, that worked. All good. Let's wait for the wave to finish and go to the next one. Okay. Uh actually let's pause for a second. So we so we look a bit at the tower. So the tower has two splines as I said. Now when I uh let's unpause it. When I expand the tower. I have 10 modules. 
another two two splines and yeah, as you can see those uh, those plots are different and we can actually look at them yeah Yeah, as you can see, those those parts are from the uh, from the new modules. I should group them into. Yeah, anyway. Um, and let's make sure that those two. Uh, where are they? So here on the tower in the tower data are the new. Okay, so those are the new splines. Now let's uh, start a level. And see where are the enemies spawning from. So still have those planes here. Now the thing is, uh, I can't differentiate between them, so that's a problem. Yeah, doesn't it's not that cute because uh, there were two two splines in both cases. Yeah, let's try. Uh, let's try it again. And uh, or no, I know. I I know. I how can do this. Um, let's go to the tower uh, runtime tower builder. And when we create the game objects, yeah, here, I think uh, we can set a name uh, directly on the game object. Yeah, the first thing is a name. Was it spline? That's another sign here. No. System GUID new GUID to string. Okay, so now we'll have uh, we'll we'll be able to differentiate between them even if they uh, have uh, if there are only two two splines. Okay, so there's only one plane right now. There we go. Let's wait for the wave to finish. And it did. Let's expand the tower. Now we have two splines and we can see the names. So 60 and 49 and 60 and 49. So the F2 is not present in here. And now we can add our uh, break back in here and uh, start a level. And here we go. So, okay, so no, actually, no, that's correct. Those are two. There are two of them. And it should be 60 and 49. 49, and this is 60. Okay, so. See where where are the enemies? Uh, what? Okay, so the enemies are down here. Now the question is why? Uh, why are the enemies down here? Yeah, as you can see, so the spline is set to this. Okay, so okay, let's look at the uh, enemy movement, which we can get from uh, get uh, get to it from here, which would be this one. Uh, not uh, not directly there, here. No, I don't want. To. Ah, got it. Yeah, let's go here. Let's find it. We're not doing anything with the spine here. I mean, except for uh, doing this and getting the evaluating it. Uh, let's 
so why doesn't the spline change? Is the question. Ah! There we go. Okay. Yeah, so, so we are using an, uh, an, an, uh, uh, we're using an object tool here for the, for the enemies. And apparently we've done some bad stuff. We are only setting the values for the data components uh, if the entity was not loaded, which is not correct. So we should always do those lines. Um, yeah, we should always do them. Let's We're doing a reset here. What does the reset mean? Okay, we're just uh, changing the position and we're uh, wait, we're releasing it back to the pool. Wait, what? That doesn't mean that doesn't make any sense. I look. Oh no, never mind. Uh, this is the reset. Components to reset. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I assume some of the things here they don't have to change. So the wave manager doesn't matter. Door and door health wave manager. Those those things doesn't matter. The only thing that matters from here is this. Uh, is to change the spline. So I think we should. Um, let's see how can we. And do this in a in a in a pretty way. I think we should just uh, copy this from here and just what it is for now. Just plop it in here. Uh, maybe um, do it before setting it to active. After the reset, before this, yeah. Let's try it like like this. Okay, two enemies, three, four. I'm gonna split in here. Okay. Oh, then they're gonna join right away. Okay, let's expand the tower. We got a new part, and now all the enemies should from here. So let's start a level. One, two, I think there were five. Yep. And now, uh, if we look at the tower, There are no enemies uh, before the starting point. So this was a starting point uh, for this part, and there are no other enemies there. So so the the fix actually worked. And now we can aim and look at how those enemies are moving. Nice. Let's make a let's make a laser somewhere here. Let's put a laser here. Now we should get a lot of enemies. There we go. And all these uh, were killed. And I just uh, thought about something else. I think we have a bug in the spawner. No, I'm, I'm more than sure we have a bug in the enemy spawner. Yeah, we need to do something about this delay timer and this. But that, that's gonna come later on. Damn, look at it go. Expand the tower. And now we got another uh, another piece of the tower and... I don't know where it starts, but probably here. No. Okay, I don't know where it starts. One, two... I think it started there. Maybe. Yeah. Ooh. 
Cool. Yes, I think I think we're uh, actually done with the tower expansion, or at least for now. We still have to do the economy part of it, which uh, which I haven't thought about yet. Um, I'll have to come back to this uh, later. Um, but for what I for, the, for what I need to do right now, it is actually working. So we have the tower. Uh, after you finish all the waves, you have the ability to to expand the tower. And then uh, place your weapons and uh, continue, them, which is actually awesome. Yeah, so I think we're gonna stop with this task here. And yeah, we've gone it uh, over the over the time that I've estimated, but that's not a problem. Um, let's commit the uh, let's commit those changes. And oh man, we've made some changes. Um, let's just look a bit at uh, at what's uh, what has changed. So what's changed here? Yeah, we've added this. Uh, so this is the fix for the spline. He added that stop thingy and made this public. Okay. Level manager. Okay, we've got rid of that flag and also the did that stop current level. Got rid of the button, added the expand method. We should expose this five in the um uh, in the editor somehow. Yeah, I'll have to see about that. Um that's to be discussed. Uh, how it's gonna be done, and uh, there I have some ideas about that. Um, what is this? Tower expansion manage. Okay. So those are the buttons. That's what happens on expand, and this is what happens on continue. Now this looks fine. Uh, this is the button. Okay. See anything weird here? This looks fine. Wave manager. Okay, we've added the collector. We have two new events. Okay, and we've added this part. Okay. What else? What else? Economy. We don't care. Those are uh, those are assets, and we don't care about those. And that's all the code. Hey, I think we're done. Uh, the code looks uh, the look, uh, the code looks fine. So let's commit this. Uh, let's select the files and commit. And uh, I have to add a uh, let me create a bug. So I've seen I've seen a bug, and I have to write it here so I can take care of it later. So. Uh, Enemy spawner. Doesn't take games consideration. So, so I, I uh, the, uh, uh, this is a bug, and we're gonna put it in the back. Um, so we had a bug. Um, I think uh, last week, where the the weapons, uh, the damage on the weapons and the or, or the the damage on the laser and the speed of the projectiles from the projectile weapon, were not taking into, into consideration the game speed, uh, if it was on normal speed or the fast speed, and the same stuff happens uh, with the enemy spawner in here, where we where the delay and the the rate at which the enemies are spawning is not. Uh, Consistent with the with the game speed. 
So uh, I'll have to take care of that uh, sometime. It's not that that important, but I've it, so I uh, so I know about it. Um, yeah, next, uh, I think we're gonna do uh, this. So dummy, or hmm, should we do this or should we do the other ones first? Uh, what's this dependent on? On the weapons plus, okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna do, yeah we're gonna do the weapon models and you know, which which they're not gonna be something uh, incredible so don't expect anything uh, anything much from me. Uh, we're gonna uh, do uh, combine some cubes and make it look uh, semi decent, but uh, we're gonna have uh, proper models later on. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work on this uh, next. And then we're gonna do red for the pass and for the uh, the weapon ranges. But yeah, this uh, this is what we're gonna work on next. Uh, I'm gonna take a short break though, and I'm gonna be back in a couple of minutes. So uh, yeah, stay tuned.
I'm back. Yeah, so as I said, let's start working on some dummy models for the weapons. So let's start. Uh, so let's try uh, start tracking time. And um, first, let's install um, Pro Builder. On Unity Registry uh, Pro Builder install. As I, said, I don't want to do something very complicated, so Pro Builder will do just fine for, for this. What's happening here, I think? Come on. Cool. We now have Pro Builder. Let's make a new scene. Actually, I think that this would be better. Okay. So let's create a Pro Builder Cube. Okay, so we have currently we have two weapons in the game. So, so first we have a laser and uh, what's the other? So the other is a projectile. So let's see what we can. Man, I hate this. So so yeah, apparently apparently it's a bug from URP. Uh, this uh, this blue thingy. Um, I've tested it in another project, in a uh, like new project, and it has the same problem. So uh, uh, we, I have to to upgrade to another version of Unity to to fix this. But it is so annoying. But anyway, uh, let's let's start working on this. So first, I think I'm gonna do, and actually, I don't think I need. A, I I don't want a cube. Let's do a circular base. And yeah, I want a cylinder, but not that big. So it's gonna have a, a 0.5 radius number of sides. Uh, let's do a hexagon. Uh, height is gonna be 0 0.25. Uh, actually, might be even smaller than that. And this might be actually bigger. Let's put a radius of one. There we go. I don't want it to be smooth. And let's build it. Okay. Uh, uh, let's get rid of this. So this is gonna be our base uh, for the weapon. I mean, for actually for both uh, for both weapons. And let's see. Um, actually, we're gonna do another cylinder. Um, or mm, what should we do actually? So for the laser, because I know how it is going to work in the end, I think I'm going to uh, replicate what we had in, um, in the prototype and make a yeah. I guess this could work. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's build it. Uh, I'm going to make some kind of crystal thingy. I don't know. Uh, Let's move it by 90 here. Let's move it up. Uh, I would like to have the pivot. Uh, Can I, uh, I'm gonna split the fa this face into triangulate? 
I don't think that's what I want. Uh, I want to split uh, the face, this face into two pieces. Anyway. How is that the center? How the hell is that the center? That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. How that can be the center of this thing. Um, but okay, I guess. Uh, let's select those. And I, uh, no, actually we can, I think we can select the face. I want to scale it. Uh, I want to scale it in all directions, actually. Do something like this. It sounds good enough, or I mean, looks good enough. Um, let's uh, move this here. Let's make it big. There we go. Um, let's put this in top-down mode. Okay, let's make it okay, create empty. Uh, this is gonna be. Laser weapon. Let's actually. I don't. I don't know how to do this, but okay. Uh, no matter. So this is gonna be the base. It's gonna be the crystal. Uh, let's disable those for now. Uh, let's move the crystal. Uh, now where the hell is that pivot? Oh, I have to select the object. Never mind. Oh, I think. Uh, I was not seeing the maybe I was not seeing the the, the point correctly because I was, it was in perspective. That doesn't matter. Um, let's sing this in a bit. Next, let's look from the top again, and let's try to align this some to be somehow in the center with the other one. Actually, can I put it? Never mind. It at zero zero. Uh, why not uh, zero here? And let's put the uh, it's at zero zero as well. And no. Uh, so let's change. Let's the pivot for the base, which that 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 is not the center. That is not the center. What it what it is? Man, this is uh, confusing us. Wait, um, sure. Um, let's move this up a bit. That's that's fine, I guess. Now it's in the center. Uh, let's add some. I don't know uh, some colors. Let's make some uh, some mater materials for those. So dummy dummy weapon. Dummy weapon is actually the laser. So let's create a, a material. Yeah, okay, can you use a lit uh, shader? I was not sure if uh, Pro Builder had some uh, special shaders, but that would, that would have been a little bit weird. Let's add that there. Let's say that we want a mission because we do. That's a little bit weird. I want this to, to have a mission, and I'm, I actually want the same color that this bug produces. Uh, let's make the the base another color. Uh, material. Base material. Let's make it this uh, semi-dark gray. Or actually, yeah, something like this. Might actually. Because this is getting annoying. Oh, I might actually update uh, Unity uh, like now. Uh, 
Actually, let's 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 get uh, the latest version. This the I, this is quite annoying. Um, yeah, sure. Ah, come on, not enough space. God damn it. Uh, pff, what can we remove? What can we remove? Uh, let's get rid of this alpha because I don't need it actually. And get rid of this. And this. And we should be fine. And it's actually no, let's give this. Now let's try to install it again. Um I don't want to add anything. Not not, to, not right now at least. Okay, so what is uh, downloading? Let's continue to work on this. So we've made the first uh, renderer, I guess. Let's make the second one. Uh, actually, let's let me use this. Uh, let's unpack. Where is the? Oh, so it's under prefab. Pack completely. Let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of the crystal. And here, instead of layer, let's call it projectile. Projectile upon model. So we have a base and I don't know what uh, what to make here. Um, I actually have no idea what to make uh, for this. Let's just make something abstract. Let's make a cube and let's rotate it. Uh, maybe I don't know. I really don't know what to what to do for this. So let's say forty five and forty five here. No, this is uh, zero and this is forty five. Yeah, sure, something like this. Kind of huge, so let's uh, scale it down a bit. So 0.5 maybe doesn't look good at all uh, because my 45 is not actually correct. I don't like this. Uh, let's add a sphere, maybe. Actually, uh, let's add it through Pro Builder. But let's see what else we have in Pro Builder. Maybe there's something interesting here. Uh, there's nothing interesting. The door? What? Oh damn, they have a door frame more like it's nice. Don't really need it, but this is cute. But yeah, actually I want the I want the sphere. And let's put the zero point five. Let's make it uh Actually, no, let's keep it like this. Let's add it here. Let's uh, center the pivot. Let's go from the top and 
put it at zero zero. That's cool. And I think I'm gonna do the same to this. So let's go here. Let's make some materials. I don't know what's this material for, but uh, I am gonna use it. So let's add it. Uh, let's change the color. Maybe. Uh, actually, no. The action. No. Let's do it. Do a green here. Let's do some emission as well. Maybe a yellow or more of a green. I don't know. Okay. Uh, let's use the same material for the base. That did not work. Or did it? No, it worked. Never mind. And now let's uh, let's make this as a, uh, a prefab. Let's use it. So here. Uh, Actually, let's add it next to this. So, uh, let's put it. And uh, what is this? So on X, I'm gonna uh, minus 90. No, it was 90. Um, Yeah, that, sh that should work. Let's pop this actually because we're gonna need it for the other weapon as well. Let's go to the to the laser uh, dummy weapon. Dummy. Let's call it dummy laser weapon. And the definition as well. Okay, so we're here. Let's add in a model. Let's bring it back into reality. Uh, for the demi laser weapon, uh, let's add the same root indicator. Okay, uh, let's rotate it. Let's add this, and it is okay, maybe. Um, I guess one thing that I want to do is change the position of this to be at the top of the tower. So this uh, would be the point from which the laser shoots the laser. The weapon shoots the laser, that's more. Okay. That's... Yeah. And actually, let's check for this as well. So, uh, no, uh, this. Let's move the projectile attack. Uh, inside of this thing too and one other thing let's check oh yeah so let's uh, remove the or disable yeah no let's 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 remove that um uh, but no let's go to this let's remove the components or the 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 collider components because we don't need a uh, collider those save this go back go to the laser laser model let's remove those colliders as well we don't want to save this um what we want to do though is try it try the game um let's uh remove this scene don't save it uh let's add the ui as well let's play the game Let's see how it looks. Let's maximize it. Laser. There we go. Have a 
very small user. Okay, I I should have done that. Uh, if I had the laser this close to the and fast forward. Oh, okay. So <laughs> it was the material used for the projectiles. Yeah, doesn't matter. Still looks uh, fine. But one thing that I that I've seen is. So let's look at the um, weapons attacks. Uh, projectile projectile attack. Yeah, here. I want this to be the route or the position from which the projectile is spawned, and I think the laser uh the same. I want the oh no, the, the laser is correct, or so it looks. Okay, the route is not mentioned. Never mind. So this is okay. No, no, this is the projectile. What the hell am I doing? It said laser. I don't know what I'm doing. Should I get closest enemy? Yeah, this. I don't want. I don't want it from the root. I want it from the transform position. So now let's try it again. Play. Ah, god damn it! He registered uh, two clicks. Let's add a projectile somewhere. Let's add it here. Hey, now that's better. So it's shooting the projectiles from this uh, thing, green thing. Let's add uh, let's add a laser as well. Let's add it here and here. Let's wait for those enemies to reach us. And yeah, that's that's nice. Cool. Does it feel a little bit laggy or... Oh, it is a little bit laggy. I think it's because of the gizmos. Yeah. Yeah. And now you see why we have to get rid of the gizmos. <laughs> they are uh, making the game run so slow. Like from... Like 300 uh, FPS to... What? 25? That's... 10 times slower. Which is unacceptable. Now it's so smooth. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so I think this task is uh, done. Um, yeah, let's log it. Let's... Uh, oh, there's nothing to look at. Yeah. Those things, uh, I just removed the root. Yeah, the root from there and the root from here. Actually, no, I want to do something else. Uh, let's change this from red to cyan. It doesn't really matter because I I, I will have to replace this uh, with uh, with a line renderer. But uh, just for now, I'm gonna replace the color just so that it matches the weapon. That's the only uh, thing. Compile. Uh, 
hell is going on. Okay. Now it's working, but it's throwing like a shit ton of, uh, of warnings for no reason at all. Okay, um, let's uh, uh, let's commit those changes and then we can uh, upgrade the Unity version. Let's create a task for, for the upgrade. Uh, what was the version? Oh, come on. What was the version that we want to upgrade to? Dot uh, eighteen. Okay. It's gonna be misc. Eight. Why can't I? Dummy weapon, laser weapon model. What the hell do you want from me? Uh, and I wish I didn't have to use collaborate, but it's so simple. It's simple, but it has sometimes it's um, it's a bit annoying. So yeah, it's a trade. I have to wait for it to quit. No, no, I'm not gonna. Actually, no, I'm gonna wait. Okay, this is actually quite annoying. Yay! Cool. Uh, let's open the project. I'm not gonna upgrade yet. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm gonna open it in the in the current uh, version. Then do the the push of the changes that we've made, and after that uh, we're gonna upgrade the editor version and see if that uh, uh, blue tint on all the objects is uh, is fixed. I really don't know what's happening. I I looked a bit at the change log, but I haven't seen anything related to that. So either it was not mentioned, or uh, or I haven't found uh, found out the the fix that uh, that fixed it, or it's not actually fixed. But I I very much doubt it that it's not fixed. Yeah, we will see. Either way, we still have to. To upgrade the, the editor version. So let's do it now. We can look at, at, at our new beautiful weapons. Please. Thank you. Now it worked. Now let's get to this. Uh, let's close the project. Let's track the time for this upgrade. I don't think it's going to take long, maybe a couple of minutes, because the project is not big, so, uh, so it should be fine. Let's go to the hub. Let's change the version and start it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do it. So while this is uh, do, uh while Unity is doing this stuff, let's see. Yeah, so let's see what 
uh, what's next. So, I do this first before those uh, those other two. It'd be interesting. Yeah, I might do I might do this first. Yeah, so uh, there are, we we have three things to do. Um, well, left to do today. So so we want uh, this weapon preview. So we can basically debug the or see that the the position of the weapon slots that we put on the on the modules is correct and it's gonna work okay with uh, with every weapon that we have. So we don't the the weapon slot too far from the path and. Uh, uh, have weapons that cannot reach the cannot reach the path or the enemies on the path. That would be bad. So that's uh, that's one thing. Then, as I said, we are, we're gonna do the path renderer. So we don't have that uh, that gizmo for the for the path. And then we're gonna do weapon range render, which I have no idea uh, how I would do it. Uh, probably it's gonna be. Uh, I mean, not not really a circle, but somewhat of a circle. Okay, so this finished. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be similar to the gizmo that we have right now. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we take it from there. I have some ideas how to make it pretty, but uh, we will see. But for now, let's see if that blue tint has. Oh God damn it! It's still here. What the. F Maybe we can upgrade URP. Maybe. <laughs> I have no idea where that blue uh, blue tint comes from. It's really annoying. What is universal RP? No, we can't upgrade it. I mean, we might be able to upgrade it if we enable preview packages. And we do have preview packages, so you're telling me there's no new version? Actually, there might there might be no no new version because um, uh, no new new version. I mean, because there exists uh, uh, URP eleven and twelve. You already have that. I mean, they are on the beta and the alpha versions of Unity, but uh, yeah, it's not cool. Not cool at all. Hey, so the the upgrade was unnecessary. Let's see what you need to change in the manifest. What what he has upgraded? Oh, he did make an upgrade. Never mind. So he did make an upgrade from ten uh, ten point five to ten point six. And actually, that's it. And yeah, whatever. He upgraded the the collab, which uh, don't really care about. Let's um. Let's look at the change log. Maybe we see something interesting here. Mm -hmm. Man, this is really annoying. But yeah, the, there's one thing that I that I'm thinking of checking. Um, project settings, what would that be? Nothing quality. Maybe in editor. No, editor doesn't sound right. Probably in player or graphics. Yeah, graphics. Not in graphics. Um, let's change this to linear. I don't think it should be in gamma. Uh, might be mistaken, but this changes to linear. Well, hello. Now look at this beauty. Hello. Now this looks like 
This looks like something. I have to get rid of those stinky things. Man, this looks nice. Let's get some gizmos in here. Oh, and we actually get some frames back. Oh no, never. I think we, I think the frame is gonna drop when we expand it again. Actually, not. We are still getting decent frames. Okay, that's actually cool. Or maybe I have to add more. Yeah, I think that let's add more weapons. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> The the lines from the weapons are a problem. That's what's slowing us down. But we're gonna get rid of them soon because we're replacing them. This looks so nice. Nice. Okay, so we've upgraded the Unity. I don't think I've upgraded, but um, it is not a problem. I mean, I think uh, if we have, um, if we've had the uh, change that linear before, I think it have worked on the previous version. But it doesn't matter. Um, Let's see. Let's commit everything. Let's do a save. Yeah, there we go. More stuff to commit. Uh, actually, this is a chore. Uh, fix. Now let's get to to the weapon preview. So let's try to do that. Let's see how that works. Okay, so let's get to a module. Let's get a simple module like this one. So let's see, do we have a component? We have a component called tower module. So here I think, or should we add a, yeah, I think I'm gonna add a debug to this, to the tower module. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this, uh, I'm gonna tidy this a little bit and uh, yeah, we're gonna add this, uh, this here. So, actually let's go from here. Let's edit the script. Hide more script. Uh, let's add some tabs here. Tab group tabs. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't added the started the track the timer tracker. Okay. Tab dot base group. Tabs dot general tab. One down. Second one down, and there's another one around here that we need to wait. Where is the other one? Oh no, that, that's everything because the prefab is under the, the module data. Never mind. Then. Okay, cool. 
cool 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 okay so now that's the general tab and i might make this a partial class now let's do it uh let's do it in a region let's call it debug and private weapon definition um debug weapon so in inspector non serialized and we're gonna add a new tab in here uh i don't know we can add it to in engine yeah that's the actually that's the tab i'm gonna add a, a debug tab but uh, the in engine tab is exactly what we need and we're gonna have uh, two methods private void Star debug or enable debug, enable debug and disable debug. Button another button. We are going to on value changed. So when we change the value, we are going to uh, enable the debug. Okay. Can I add this to a tab? Let's see if I can add this to a tab group. I hope, I mean, it doesn't throw an error, so, so we might be able to add them to the in engine tab. Oh yes, oh yeah. And one other thing, let's all, uh, add them to a horizontal group. Ah, God damn it. Horizontal group and also, can I set the name of this? I want, I want, I want name, yeah. Name is disable. Uh, let's see it. Why am I seeing them in? place i think it's because of the horizontal group but Yeah, I might be, might have to get rid of the horizontal group, which is not a big problem. Private bool is debug enabled. Let's put this on false. Let's make this true. Let's make it false here. And we're gonna use this to disable if uh, name of this. And do we have enable if? No, we don't have enable if, but we have, we can make 
the inverse of this is debug disabled, which is gonna return not this. So here we can still use disable if, but with this other. But does it really not exist? Eh, okay. I don't know why it didn't give me this before. Yeah, the enable if it exists. Okay. I'll let it back OBS on screen, like so. Okay. So here we have it. We can click on enable and disable, and it switches between them. We have the weapon. Um, Let's make something here. So, um, debug weapon. Uh, let's hide label. Let's indent. I don't know if I can add indent to this. Uh, so, we'll see. To the buttons, I mean. I hope I can. Nice. So we have the weapon, and then we have an enable and disable button. And now we have to do the the interesting part. Um, I actually know there's more to this. So the enable button, uh, it needs uh, private bool. If it's not enabled and this is not null, this would be enabled if, and is it the same for this? Can disable, even though it's if uh, can disable if it's enabled. Okay. So now we we can't uh, uh, we can't enable it because we haven't selected any weapons. So let's select the weapon. Now it it uh, it was enabled by default because we have this value changed. So when the God damn it, sorry for that. So when the value is changed, we call the or the or, uh, Odin calls uh, enable debug. And now we can disable and enable it again because we have a value. Uh, more things, more things. Uh, um, let's add asset selector on this. So instead of having to press on this button, we're gonna have a, a handy little thing here, which doesn't look that good, actually. Uh, maybe because of the indent. Or maybe because of the label, or because of the label, the label is not present. Let's let's see if the label is a problem. Yeah, actually, I don't like this. Yeah, no. Let's keep the uh, the label hidden and let's get rid of this. Okay. So what do we what do we need to do here? Um. Let's add a private void clear. Clear debug, which is gonna be called here. And also on enable, in case we need something, we need, in case we need to clear something. So private object, uh, Debug weapon instance. Destroy immediate this. 
Okay. The reference. So that's an async. Yeah, uh, it's a game object. Wait for completion. Oh no, uh, this is the prefab. So it's the reference to the prefab. And this is gonna be instantiate of prefab uh, position. It's gonna be vector three dot zero, and quaternary identity, and the transform is gonna be this. Height flags. We're gonna have height and don't save. Don't wanna see it in the hierarchy, and we definitely don't wanna save it in the module. And I. Th I think that's everything. I think that is everything that we need. Oh, I might get an error here actually if I load this to, if or if I try to load it twice, but uh, we'll see. So let's select a weapon. Uh, it created the weapon inside the module apparently. Let's uh, let's go into perspective mode. Yeah, so it created the weapon there, which is not correct. Okay, so I'm gonna give it transform that position and transform that rotation. Let's cache the transform and let's see if it works now. Uh, discard changes. Let's go. Let's go back to the module. Um... Oh, okay. I am stupid. Uh, I've added everything to the tower module, which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm sorry for this. Uh, this shouldn't be here. I'm gonna keep the the tabs though. Uh, this should be the weapon slot. Uh, I don't know what what I was thinking. So this should be on the weapon slot. So let's add it way 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 down here. Let's import the tabs. And actually no, let's remove the the tabs here because actually they're not needed. Okay. Let's get rid of stuff in here. Let's go to the button slot and let's add some tabs here. And I think that is everything, uh, but we'll check uh, real quick. So let's go to the weapon slot. So we have stuff in the general tab. Let's go to in engine, and here we have this. So this is nice. Now let's try it again. Um, let's try to assign this. There we go. So now we have uh, the debug view of the weapon. We can disable it if we want. We can enable it back. We can't actually. Uh, the object you want to instantiate is null. Is a lot as a ref that has already been loaded. Yep, yep, exactly. That uh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't uh, do that. So let's uh, go here and let's see. Uh, so get this. 
If it's done, let's get the, I think the asset is what I need, uh, but let's see. Is the loaded asset is the valid only set? Uh, even though set if only instantiate, I think is called. Okay. Oh, we can call, okay, okay, okay. I've seen something there and I actually like it. No, actually, never mind. Uh, yeah, let's do it like that. So this asset, uh, let's cast it as a game object. Game object. Okay, now it should work fine. So it's gonna load it the first time and the second time it's just gonna get the value that it's uh, storing. Okay, weapon slot, let's select the weapon. Still doesn't work. Okay. Fine. I'm gonna do it like this if that's what you want. After you instantiate it, um, let's do it like this. We're gonna load it, we're gonna instantiate it, and then we're gonna release it. So now we should uh, not get any errors. Yeah, we instantiate it, we disable it. And we can enable it again. So now the thing is that uh, each time we do this, uh, we are loading this addressable again. But I think that's that's a that's a big problem. So yeah. So now we can change another weapon. So this is a bigger weapon. This is the uh, the projectile one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, we are able to deploy those uh, those weapons uh, in the modules, so we know for sure uh, the, the, if the weapon slots are are positioned correctly. And one thing that I want to check is the weapon should move with the uh, with the weapon slot if I change it. Yeah. There you go. So the debug is actually moving with this. Cool. Another thing, let's discard, let's go back to the module and okay, so when I select this or when I change the value, I'm actually, or the, or the, the, the prefab is getting uh, dirty. So that's, sh that shouldn't happen. Uh, I'm wondering if I, if I can set the doesn't seem like I can set the height flags uh, from here. Also, Victor three zero. What their identity? This should be. This should work. This doesn't work. Okay, never mind. Huh. Okay, I didn't know those were in uh, world positions. Yeah. Then we move, we disable, we enable, and it's there. We disable and we move, we enable, and it's here. Cool. So this works, but I still don't like that uh, the prefab is getting dirty. But it, even if if I said, oh no, something did change. Oh, obviously something changed because I changed the value. If I set it back to zero, okay. So the mo the module is not doesn't have anything in it. 
even if I enable this and I save, there's nothing changing here because uh, that uh, or the, this debug uh, weapon uh, has the has the flag on it. Hide and dot, uh, don't save and not save. Yeah. Um, you don't like that that the, the, the prefab is getting dirty. I mean, it might, it might not be a, a really big problem because um, probably when you're testing this, you've already moved the, the weapon slot or uh, yeah, and, and the, the, prefab, the prefab would be already dirty. So it doesn't matter that it's getting dirty because I instantiate this. But even so, even if it's getting dirty, you can either uh, discard the changes or save the asset and basically nothing would save because the asset would be the same. I mean, yeah, um, you won't save anything about this, this weapon. Okay. Uh... This is it for this task. I think there's anything else that I want to do. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if I maybe want to disable the the preview and deselect the, the the asset. Maybe, which I can do easily. I think by let's see. An inspector dispose. I think is what I would want. Disable debug. Let's try it. I'm not sure if uh, if I uh, change the tab in the inspector if uh, that's gonna change it. So doing this doesn't change it. But if I click outside, that does it. Okay. I'm wondering if, if, if this is a thing to do. I'm, I'm thinking of the work, how, how you would work with the mods and the, the weapon slots. And if this is something that is, that it would help or it would bother having a, Having the the debug preview uh, get this when you click out of the the weapon slot. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it. I can add it. Uh, I can add it back uh, later on if if it's actually needed. But I don't think it's gonna be needed. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's it. Um, that for this task. Yeah. 
let's commit it and uh, move on to the next one. Have we changed our module? I think some we've deleted some imports. Oh no, we had a high monoscript, which is uh, totally fine. And let's look at this. Oh god, damn it, I hate her system there. Yeah, this looks okay. Why, why do we need system here? I don't think we need it. And if we need it, why do we need it? Let's find out. Ah, I see. Because of this. Okay. Cool. Let's commit this. This is a feature. Publish. Okay. The next task that we're gonna do, or should we stay on the, should we stay on web, or should we move to pass? Web. I'm not sure. Might do weapons. Or no, no, because we uh, I guess I don't know exactly how I wanna I wanna do the weapons. Yeah, no. We're gonna do the pass first. So we're gonna do a renderer for the pass and then we're gonna go to the weapons. So let's start on this, because this is uh Yeah. It's kind of straightforward what I want from this. It's gonna be the same or uh, the same thing that we've done in the prototype. Or at least for now it's gonna be the same thing. So let's do this. Um, actually, we have to open a module. Okay. So here is the path, and what I would need. So so what I'm what I'm thinking of doing is having. Um, so I'm so I'm gonna use main renderers for uh, for the path. And what I'm thinking of uh, of doing is having a line render for each path in the in the game. Uh, I mean, for each path, not, uh, for each path in in, in module. Um, so I'm not gonna create the I'm not gonna create the lines at uh, yes, exactly. I'm not gonna create the lines at runtime, and uh, make uh, like a huge. Uh, like a huge line all around the tower or something like that. I'm gonna have lines for each uh, module of the tower, for each path of each module. And uh, basically they're gonna look like a continuous line, but they will be, uh, they, they will be separate lines. They will look the same, we'll, have, we'll use the same material and whatnot, but uh, uh, they're gonna be separate lines. So, um, Let's see. Uh, let's go to splines and let's create a spline renderer. But actually, no, I am going to. Well, no, no, I'm not gonna create it at runtime. Yeah, okay, okay, I know what to do. So we'll need a reference to a line renderer. So it's gonna be our line renderer. Uh, uh, let's add a serialized field. Um, the line renderer is gonna be, I'm gonna probably store it as a child of this. Or no, let's let's add it as a required component. Line renderer. Um, what else? Um, oh, actually, I think that's everything that we need. Yeah. 
I mean, as in the the data that we need. That's uh, that's what I mean. Um, no, we actually need the private a reference to the spline, obviously, because we need to get the points from uh, from the spline. Uh, and uh, what else? What else? We will need a method. So 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 the spline has a way of getting the what is it? We have a way of evaluating the spline. So through this method or this one, uh, you can evaluate the um, the spline and get. Uh, so you say you give it a percentage, for example, and it gives you back a a position. But what I would like for this for the spline renderer is I don't care uh, about this uh, evaluation. I actually care about. Uh, so we have a caching uh, system uh, in, in, in in the spline where we let's see where it is. I think are the uh, another waypoints. No, yeah, here. So we have this cache. So whenever you change the waypoints on the, on a spline, and let's uh, actually visualize that. So if you go to a path, this is the path. Those are the waypoints. Uh, a waypoint is defined by an angle. Uh, uh, so angle is around the tower and the height so this is our line and if i change the angle as you can see the uh, the line goes around the tower and you can make it go around like crazy and the height uh, obviously sets the the height of the point so if i put a pin here uh Put a 360, and now see how crazy the long the line goes. Um, and uh, yeah, so so those are the the, the points. Uh, but yeah, those are only the, the 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 starting and the the start and the end points of the of the of those lines. Uh, but we also need the inter intermediary points. That's the whole. Uh, that's the whole idea of the spline. So, uh, we have this cache in which we store positions so we, we basically evaluate the the um, we evaluate the the spline beforehand and we store uh, values uh, at, a set, a set, a set, at a certain distance from one another and whenever you want a value instead of actually calculating the value on the spot uh, you should look in the cache and give you the value that you need and this is yeah this is cache you have a list of a lot a lot a lot of values where you can uh, where you can get stuff from and uh, this is the list that I would like to get uh, to use for the path and what I th what I'm thinking of doing is in order to think about it I might merge the spline render in the spline I might merge merge them into, uh, or or I might make the renderer directly into the spline and not have it as a separate uh, as a separate component. So yeah, I might do that. I'm trying to think if I would need the splines for anything else, but uh, those splines are not actually generic splines, so I don't see any other use that we would. Uh, that where, where this would uh, those would be useful because because uh, those plans are made specifically for this kind of behavior to go around the tower so there because a spine by by default it, it would go just between those two points directly like uh, in a straight line but in this context it actually goes around the tower if you if you change this you know and uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna merge this. So in having uh, this uh, spline renderer, we're gonna delete the spline, uh, spline renderer. Um, and let's click on delete. And here, somewhere here, I don't know where. Here, let's add a reference to the line renderer. Let's say that we 
require component type of line renderer. So we need a line renderer on the same object. And what we're going to do is after we uh, recalculate the cache, whenever that happens, um, going to set the points points and it's going to be cache and let's, let's see how this how this looks like we have the path we need to add a line renderer uh where are the the position are closed here which is uh awesome and let's do something here let's uh let's assign the line renderer and let's change this okay so let's put this let's make this easier for for the system let's put this at 90 pixels and now we should have positions here and we don't i mean we do but we don't so uh before that we need to specify um yeah the number of uh points that we have we have to specify this so let's get the length here let's close this and let's change this again and here we go, we have a line. We have a line. That is amazing. Let's make this a little uh, like this. Um, Where are the materials here? Let's call this mat. Uh, no, we don't want to receive shadows, no specular highlights, no reflections, GPU instancing, yes, please. Let's save this. And also, let's make a preset for this uh, here. Save current to um, project, let's make a folder presets and renderer spline path so now what we can do is go to each module um actually let's select oh uh, the, the line renderer is already added let's uh select this Let's go to this uh, as well. Uh, one other thing that's that's gonna help us is let's add this on change. Yeah, that's fine. We don't care if we regenerate the points again. 
now when when I assign the line renderer, the the values are uh, assigned immediate to the line. Okay, save this. And yeah, we have to do this for all the uh, for all the models we have. Now that I look about, uh, that I look at, uh, uh, let's change the the preset name. So let's put line render at the end, and let's put spline path at the front. So that it's easier uh, recognizable when you select it. But the other we're gonna have multiple uh, for the line render, but it doesn't matter. Like so. So you, now you can read path here. And the second path Oh Um let's go to the to the preset. We have to remove something from this. So the points we have to remove from the preset. Exclude property. Um, good. Okay. Cat shadows. No. Um, dynamic occlusion. Uh, we don't care about this. Light probes, we don't care. Uh, this is not in world space, right? I don't think it's in world space. Let's put the evaluate. Yeah, it's not in world space. Yeah, this should be fine. So now let's let's go back here, and if we go to this path, let's set none here. Uh, let's set the line render. And now let's set the preset. And it did not retain the. Wait, what is wrong here? Oh, okay. So this was. Uh, wait, no. What? I am confused. Okay, I have no idea what happened there. Uh, that looked totally weird. Um, let's look at the let's let's get uh, let's look at those uh, line renders. Let's apply the new preset and be sure that everything is okay. So this preset let's add apply to the first path as well. So what is it? This is split. Let's go to parallel. Uh, save changes, please. Okay, this one is uh, not doing well. As the value, let's apply the preset to here. Okay, this is parallel. Let's go to helix. 
Helix we just modify. So that's the, the good one. Actually, let's, let's just test it. It was so weird. Yeah, now it works fine. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Okay, let's look at combine. Let's assign the renderer. Uh, let's the renderer here as well. Let's apply the preset. Okay, module, uh, module 180, one path, add it, apply the preset, we're done, and 180 reverse, and this is the last one. Um, drag it, apply it, save, back, and now let's play. Hello. We have the lines, and it looks like they're looking, uh, they're looking okay at the intersection. I uh, look, uh, maybe it's gonna look weak when we have when we go into another direction, like like here. Oh, we have to. This is the straight piece. We have to change this. Yeah, like here. So this is not looking great. Uh, But uh, yeah, I think this will have to do for now. There might be a way of making it better, but uh, I'll have to see. Let's uh, change the, the strip is back to what it was, like this. Um, This might help. Having it capped like this, this might make it look a little bit better. So we can try this. Let's change it on the preset. Like this. And let's go to all the modules and apply the preset. Save this is split. Let's go to parallel. By the preset, helix, fine. One eighty and one eighty reverse. Okay, now let's uh, let's uh, look at the game again. On. This looks nice. This looks nice. Let's expand so we can get something else. Come on, give me some. Ah. Let's wait for the level to finish. And actually, we can add lasers so we can kill the enemies faster. the tower here we go yeah now this looks awesome this looks good yeah yeah this looks much better those uh, intersections those look uh, quite nice okay so this is nice this is actually uh, starting to look uh, really nice um uh let's see um i'd like to add some uh some bloom to this so so, so the thing it, it looks good right now but uh let's add some post processing to this And let's see how that is done. 
Uh, they haven't actually done post processing in uh, in URP, so not sure how to do it. Uh, but we'll find out uh, real soon. So on settings rendering, it's not a render feature that I know. I think we need to uh, enable post processing in here somewhere. Pretty sure about that. Okay, so we have post processing. Let's uh, enable uh, HDR. Okay. Uh, we are not gonna have mixed lighting. We're only gonna have uh, real time lighting. So let's uh, remove that. And how do we do post processing? That's a very good question. I have no. Oh no, I think I know. Um, we need to add a volume, which is global. Um, create a new profile. Where did you create this? Here. This is not good. Not good enough. Uh, let's move this to to the rendering folder. Uh, let's remove this uh, folder. Settings, rendering. No. Ah, God damn it. Okay. Add over post processing. Bloom. We want bloom. I don't know how to set that up, but uh, we'll find out real soon. I think we have to enable post processing on the camera. Yep. Um, what else? What else? Uh, um, I think we need to set the the layer for the post processing somewhere around here. Or at least that's how it was in HDRP. Doesn't look like it. I don't see any anything about. I mean, anything else about process processing? So let's try it like this. Oh hell yeah, we have bloom. That is nice. And we have bloom on the weapons. Let's make a laser. Uh, this doesn't really have bloom, but man, these lines like look nice. Awesome, awesome, cool. So I think we're done with this task as well. So let's um, let's finish the timer and commit those changes. And now we're gonna do the other one for the end. The other one and the last one for today, which is the range uh, renderer, which I still don't know how I want to look like, but um, we'll find out together, I guess. Okay. Okay, so this is the task. Um, actually, I don't. I don't have anything else to say about it. I've talked already about it. Um, yeah. So, um, let's see. So let's look at the web. Let's take the laser for example. So here, what I think I'm gonna do uh, most probably is. As, as we have this uh, this circle here that follows the curvature of the of the tower, I think I'm gonna have a similar thing for the for the weapon range. So I'm probably gonna make a yeah I'm gonna make this circle using a line renderer and uh, I think that's gonna be it for now. I'm thinking I'm thinking, but that's that's maybe uh, that's for the future, I guess. I think it would be nice to have like um Oh 
uh, mail from Unity in the form. I wonder what that is. Um, so this would be the line, and I think it would be to have uh, particles that fly off from this line somehow. You know? I don't know if it makes sense, but I think it would be interesting to have particles floating up from the line. But uh, I don't think I'm gonna deal with the the, with, the, with the particle system right now, and I don't I don't really know if I can hook it up to the to the line renderer. So yeah, I don't know about that. So for now, we're only gonna do the line uh, using the line renderer, which would be which will be awesome. Um, and what we're, what I think we're gonna do is hook this up uh, in the enemy detector. So we're gonna do something similar to the spline where we have this uh, line renderer uh, and we're gonna uh, attach it to the enemy detector. So yeah, let's go here. Let's edit the script. We are going to the data component and we're gonna add a reference here. So public, uh line renderer line okay we're gonna add this internal tab add a uh, space here so 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 we have some space between this and the closest enemy stuff Okay. And what we're gonna do is uh where do we draw this? Oh, we have this collider visualizer. I see. Okay. So, so this is where we need to get. Yeah. So yeah, what I'm think I'm gonna do is um, I refactor this uh, this method and extract the the part where it where it's calculating the uh, where it's calculating the points. Yeah. So let's let's make a public static um I think I'm gonna make it as a I enumerator, maybe. Actually I never know. I enumerator or I enumerable. Okay, I enumerable of vector three i guess okay Um, yeah, we need something like this. No, it's I enumerator. Okay. Let's actually copy everything from here. Uh, um, oh man, we need a, a reference to the collider which we should have in the enemy detector, right? Maybe. Yes, we do. Nice. Uh, 
okay so let's copy this and we also need the global tower data okay uh, why do we need the global tower data for so we need the radius and this thing we can actually pass in from outside so that doesn't matter so have the collider and load uh, tower radius yeah let's remove this this is not needed actually this whole thing is not needed uh, uh we don't have a color we don't care about handles uh transform we can send a transform um let's rename this to a root and let's remove it Let's remove this. And here where we're drawing, we don't care about this. Or this. And we don't have to go uh Okay. This is not needed. Oh, and we apparently we actually don't need the, the root anymore. Okay, so I think this is everything that we need. I think. What I'm going to do though is So what I'm thinking right now is I need a place to update the line renderer. So so to add the points to the line renderer, but I don't think I don't know where I would do that. Because ideally I would like to have it on but I'd change it when the collider changes. But I don't know when the collider changes. Do I? Actually do. I actually do know when the collider changes. But it's not. But I don't want to put it there. So. Yeah, what I'm thinking right now is I add. Where is it? So here. Yeah, so here we have the collider. And here I can add a um, value changed, and it has um, whatever it has a we don't we don't care about, and it has include children. So I I think that by using this. I can change the the radius I don't know. 
do it. Um, hmm. I mean, I can do it the easy way and just add a button to this. I could do that. It's not that pretty. It is not that pretty. I can add in... And uh, yeah, that's not, not okay. God damn it. Can add an on an on update here. Um, but also, it's not correct. I mean, not that not not that it's not correct. It's not. Uh, I can do this. But actually, I don't know what that means. So in those uh, places, do I have anything related to Unity? Not really. So I'm looking for methods like awake or start, but I don't have those. What I do have is this on fixed. Oh, I don't care about this. This is mine. This is not Unity stuff. A now this is awesome. Okay, okay, now we're talking. Unity editor. Um, update. Application uh, is not, or if it's playing, I'm gonna return. So I wanna do anything. If it's not playing. So if I'm in the editor, um, lighter visualizer dot get circle, and I need to provide some stuff to it. Um, D dot collider and D dot I don't have a reference tower module uh, data. So let's add that. Uh, it would be in the internal tab. Let's put it here. Why not? Let's remove the space. Tower module data, tower module data. Dot radius. Wait, not tower module data was global tower data. That's what I want, not module data. Global tower data. Radius. Wait. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this. Let's look at it. Let's uh, search a bit uh, about this. Um, C sharp return.
Oh, so I can do this. Hello. I thought I had, but apparently I don't. I thought I had to return a, 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 a non enumerator, but apparently not. I can return an I enumerable. And now I, what I can do here is say to array. I can do this and d dot line dot uh, set positions points. And if this works, that would be nice. Uh, not sure it's gonna work though because we don't have that line. We have to add. Yeah, we need to add some things here. So first, uh, under the enemy detector, let's let's create a line line renderer. Uh, let's add for now uh, the spline path to it, and um, let's assign the the values here. So uh, not enemy that. Oh yeah. No, enemy detector, that's the one. So I want the line. And I want this. Aha! We have the line! Oh my god, we have the line. Now we have to make it look uh, different, but... Uh, but and this looks nice. Let's create a material here so um open that should do it or actually i can remove the weapon from the front because it doesn't really matter that it's a weapon obviously it's a weapon of, uh... Come on! What the hell are you doing? What the f oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> we're stuck here uh, oh and the debugger is not attached um well that's shit uh can we do this let me attach this please i mean even if i attach it, it doesn't Ah, oh, god damn it! Uh, yeah, we're stuck in an infinite loop. That's awesome. Shit. Uh, we have to kill the editor. First, let's fix this. Maybe we're gonna be able to uh, salvage. Uh, private. Load. Collider radius. Zero by default, so if this or the dot collider dot radius is equal to this, and yeah, 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 let's do it with whatever you want. If it's smaller than zero five difference, or like like this. Then here, I'm gonna assign it, but the other way around. And I don't think we're gonna get out of this loop. I'll have to uh, kill Unity and... 
the the barge uh, stopped. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, nope, doesn't look like it. Now I'm gonna kill Unity and uh, start it again. Uh, where are you, Unity? Here we go. Uh, let's kill the editor. I don't want to send you a bug report. Um, now let's open the project again. So now it should be fine. Yeah, so the problem was that we were doing this update loop. We were just constantly doing stuff and uh, uh, replacing the, the the things on the line, the, the points on the line. So now we're only doing this when the collider uh, radius has changed. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> I hope it's gonna work, but uh, we'll see right uh, right away. If the editor uh, gets stuck after I open a uh, after I open a weapon, then uh, it's not fixed. But I think it's gonna work. I think this is uh, this is enough for this uh, for it to work. Okay, so let's uh yeah no let's 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 weapon uh, open the weapon and see. I think I want the the laser. Okay, so we're here. We are still able to look uh, through the tour, so that is okay. Uh, we might not have value saved here, though. Yes, we are not. Oh, actually, we don't have the the line even. So let's add that line. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, create empty. Yeah. Line. Line render. Let's apply this. Now let's assign everything. So the line and this. And now uh, nothing happened, which is as expected because we haven't changed anything. But now if we change this, bam, we have the line, but still uh, able to use uh, the editor. So that works. Now let's see. Let's see about this uh, line. Let's make it look uh, a little bit better. So we're starting by making this uh, this material, and I said I'm gonna remove the weapon from the front of it. Enemy detector line mat. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay. Um. I don't want to split it up. Yeah, like this. Okay. Okay, let's add some colors to this. Let's make this purple. Uh, let's add emission because now we have bloom. Which is awesome. Uh, maybe maybe a color like this would be better. Yeah, something like this maybe. Uh, GPU setting for sure. No reflection. No circular highlight. Uh, no shadows. Yes. Save. Let's apply this. I mean, not here, but on the line render. Uh, what is it here? Cool, kind of pink, but might look better. Uh, oh, if we have post processing, but I don't. It looks like maybe if we, no, never mind. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's make this a little bit uh, 
uh, thinner, maybe even more. 065 yeah this might be okay and uh, one thing that I want to do is here um I don't know which direction I need to set. I think Z. Um, but I don't want to set Z. I want to add to Z. Offset Z. Offset Z. I'm set Z by 0.5F maybe, or 2.5. I just want to get it uh, a little bit off the ground. And let's change that uh, radius a bit. So updated. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's change this. Will be something smaller. Okay. So now, um, Yeah, now we have to do the same thing. Or no, first, let's save this as a print. Um, let's put it in the resets. Um, enemy detector. Enemy detector was the name, right? Yeah, enemy detector. Okay. Let's go back and let's do this. Uh, for the projectile weapon because we, we need to add this here too so enemy detector empty line line render let's apply the preset this one and yeah we have to change that um preset set position to zero zero and exclude the size from the property. And what else? What else? Let's put this here for now. Uh, and I think that's everything that we need. We just have to assign the, the values. So a line. And this is it from here. Save. Here we have it. Now let's look at it in the game. Okay, so we have this. Let's put the laser somewhere. Let's say here. Hello. Now that's nice. Let's remove the... Oh, actually we don't have gizmos. Ah, uh, the, the, the placement of the of the weapon is not... I uh, think it's behind the path, which shouldn't uh, be the case. But man, it looks nice. Let's add a projectile weapon as well. Hello. This looks dope. I kind of like the those uh, neon colors. Those are nice. Let's expand the tower. Start level. Let's add a laser somewhere. Let's add it here. And another one here. Awesome. This is awesome. Uh, 
But I made everything. Let's expand the tower again. Man, it looks so nice. I'm gonna add bloom to those things as well. Actually, let's let's add it right now. One slot red material. Let's add some bloom to this. I mean, not bloom. Um, let's go a bit towards uh, orange. Uh, we're gonna add a uh, emission. That's what I mean. Not, not bloom. Green material. Let's add emission to this as well. Let's go towards the, the yellow. Hey, there we go. That projectile. <laughs> this starts to look nice. And now I think uh, what we need to do is, yeah, I think I'm gonna look into uh, making particles come out of those lines. I really like to know how to do that. But if I wonder if it's a if, if it's an easy thing to do. So let's search for that. So. Yeah, this, I guess this, yeah, obviously. No one says anything. Okay, so this is a thing called. Yeah, let's actually let's make a new scene, and let's play with this here. So let's make a particle system effect, I guess, right? Yeah. And shape. Not actually a uh, mesh render, so yeah, that won't actually work. Uh, let's make a line. So it's in effect, uh, line. Let's add something to this. Let's say the green material. Let's make this way, way bigger. Um, no, I want. And I can't add this here, obviously. There's no other thing that I can select from here that's gonna help me, except probably not sphere, uh, circle. Maybe a circle is what I want, but even this is not what I want actually. So maybe edge, but.
What is the direction in which the the particle starts? Or can I even set that? Because I only want them to go uh, upwards. And I'm not seeing... Yeah, so I, I I only want them to go uh, up or whatever in a single direction. So there is there is velocity over lifetime, but that's not what I want. If I want to change the velocity over time. I want initial velocity to to be. Uh, a certain value. Do I have? No, I don't. Do I have to install it? It's not yet available. Wait. Okay, so I guess it's not yet available. No, we should have a graph. Enough. Yeah, I think we're gonna um, particles right now. Um, <laughs> well, that's a way to do it. So I was, uh, I was looking at uh, someone saying how to make uh, how to make them uh, upwards, and they just said just make the gravity negative, <laughs> which I guess works. <laughs> but but still, like that's kind of stupid. Yeah, okay, so I guess we're not gonna have uh, particles, which is a bit sad, but uh, doesn't matter that much, because we have those pretty lines. Look at those lines. Look at that zoom. This is cute. So cute.
I think we're gonna stop this uh, this task here. Uh, yeah, this is actually quite nice. And man, the frames that we have. <laughs> this is so nice. Let's try to get another weapon. Ah, god damn it! Oh my god. Eh. I kinda got to it. Yeah, this looks this looks nice. Very nice. I've used all the weapon slots? No, there's another one here. Hey, look at that weapon slot. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna stop the the timer for the task. Where is it? Over here. No, 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 no. Finish. Ah, oh, goddammit. Um, yes, yeah, so I want uh, 43 minutes. Let's commit those changes. Let's close that because it's annoying. Oh, actually, we haven't, uh, we haven't had, uh, something. Uh, let's get back. Uh, so, on the enemy detector, we've made, or not, we've actually used, uh, we've made this method, get circle, uh, on the uh, collider visualizer. And so it calculates the, 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 the points that we need, um, that, that, that uh, circle that, uh, uh, that is projected under the tower. But we haven't used it in the in the method above. So for the actual uh, on draw gizmos, so we should do that. Um, and I think that the easiest way to do it is, let's see. Um, let's let's draw here. Or no, let's make another, uh, let's duplicate the Androgismos method. Let's add a two here, or like, whatever. Um, let's split this. And I'm gonna have the, the old code on the right and the new code on the left. So, we need that check, yeah. We need a transform, probably. Uh, we don't need those steps. I'm quite sure I don't, we don't need those steps. We don't need this. We don't need this. Um, var points equals circle of collider and radius and what we want to do is actually no points dot for each our last point was null no uh, I can make a vector null right yeah uh, I can make it, I can make it not like this though, but I don't want to. Um, so yeah, that's a vector three. Uh, no, previous point. Let's call it. Um, so if it doesn't have the previous point um, I'm gonna make it two and then we're gonna continue um, actually not continue we're gonna put an else here 
Oh no, yeah, no, we're gonna continue. No, yeah. So previ previous point is gonna be point here. And in here, we're gonna copy all of those. And from it's gonna be previous point. Uh, what's happening here? It's not, uh, but it is. Now let's make a vector three zero so it shuts up. Two is gonna be point. Two, it's a point. And previous point is from and from. And now we don't need this. And I think that's everything that means. And this can be a const. Okay. And I think that's everything. I think this Andro Gizmos is gonna do the same thing that uh, the previous code did, uh, but uh, and actually you can do bar here. Uh, but uh, now it's using this circle method. So let's try it. Let's open a uh, let's open a weapon, and here we go. So we still have the the, the Gizmo, uh, but we are using the method. Uh, instead of the old code. Cool. So yeah. Uh, let's add another five minutes here. So now we can commit the code. Uh, let's look a bit of what we've changed. So we've added this off with Z. We, yeah, so those are the changes that I've done uh, right now. Which don't really matter that much um let's look at the enemy detector so execute in edit mode yeah that's uh, necessary and we have this and in the data we've added uh what a uh, reference to the line and a reference to the global tower data and i think that's all the code that we've changed yeah okay let's publish this and Let's have a last look at what we've done today. Okay, so this uh, task is done as well. So, what we've done today. So, first of all, we have those pretty lines for the for the paths that the enemy take. We have some post processing added. That's like. <laughs> Just a small bonus. Uh, we've added a way of visualizing uh, the area in which the enemies uh, will be attacked when the... so so when when an enemy is in this area, uh, it will get attacked. Uh, this was previous, previously uh, visible, but we, it was done using gizmos, so you can see those uh, faint lines. Uh, we previously had this, but now we are actually, and the same for the, for the, for the, for the path of the enemies, we have this, uh, hard to see, but there's a, like a cyan line that follows, actually you can see it here better. So here's the cyan path, those are the paths that the enemy take. What we've done now is uh, we've used, uh, line renderers to, to, to make those uh, those lines visible at runtime, we've added some, some simple uh, um, what do you call them um, models for weapons. So this is the the projectile weapon. These are those are just some dummy uh, dummy uh, weapons that I've made. So this is the that, that's the projectile, and this is the laser. Uh, we still don't have the, the, the actual laser for the weapon, but uh, we will add that later on. And what else? What else was on the list? Um, what happened here? Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, the, 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 the biggest feature that we've done today is 
after you finish the the the, the waves for the current level, uh, you'll be given the choice to to expand the tower. So basically, go to the next level. And when you press it, uh, and I should have been at the top of the to see this. But the idea is that the tower expands, so you get uh, another uh, five modules of the tower on top of what was already available. And now when you start the level, uh, the enemy is going to spawn uh, uh, on the new part of the tower. So let's uh, let's finish some levels here and let's see, see that expansion. Uh, um, here at the top. So, so this is the end of the tower right now. Let's wait for this uh, uh, to finish. Okay. So now we have the option of expanding the tower. So now I'm going to click on this. Boom. We have another piece of the tower generated. And now we can play here. And the enemies are going to be spawned from this new where they should be spawned. Uh, where are the enemies? We don't have enemies. Okay, the enemies should have been spawned from uh, from those two points. Where the hell are the enemies? Do we have enemies? What's go oh, my bad. Yeah, I'm stupid. Yeah, so uh, after you expand the tower. Um, you have uh, you have some time to to start setting up your weapon. So let's say I'm gonna add a weapon here. I'm gonna add another one here. And after you've done all the, all the preparations, uh, you can start uh, the the new level. So yeah, as you can see, the the enemy started spawning from uh, this point up. So so they are uh, we are currently playing on the new uh, part of the tower. Those enemies are actually much more powerful. So I've added some players to their health and their strength. So uh, apparently the the laser weapon doesn't uh, uh, or can't uh, damage them fast enough to kill them. Or oh, actually, oh, it might be the the other. Yeah, it seems to work fine. Yeah, so yeah, that's what we what we've done today. Um, next time, not quite sure what we're gonna work on. I have to do some planning, but um, we're probably gonna continue to work on this uh, tower expansion uh, because there's one thing that we haven't done yet, and that is, um, so so whenever you you finish the when you finish the level. Um, and you expand the tower. Um, we would like to 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 give you back all the money that you've spent on building weapons on the previous uh, tower. And um, I think that's what what we're gonna work on. So, so what that means is we're gonna keep track of all the the money you spent on a level, or during a level. And when you finish that level and you um, expand the tower. We're gonna give you the the money back plus a little bit uh, a little bit more like uh, I don't know 10 20 percent more and uh, yeah then you'll be able to to recreate your weapons on the new on the new piece of the tower and maybe arrange it differently or uh, get new weapons because um, maybe you wanna you wanna try in the first part of the tower you get lasers and now you wanna try projectiles and yeah, you can do that, or you'll be able to do that. So yeah, pr most probably that's what what we're gonna work on, so so we can finish with the tower expansion. Probably, maybe make some some more modules, because now we have, I think we have everything we need to make those modules look uh, more decent. So we're probably gonna work more on some some on some new modules and 
tower look like an actual tower, not like a, a gray cylinder. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We're gonna stop. On, uh, we're gonna stop here for today, and uh, we're gonna continue next Saturday. So yeah, uh, thanks for being here, and see you on the next stream. Bye bye.